Hello, experimenters. Unacceptable. And the man behind the camera with the excellent handwriting is your soon able. And you might be wondering why I'm starting behind a corner. <clears throat> I'm trying to demonstrate one of the properties of waves, sound waves, and that when it encounters an obstacle, like a corner, it tends to bend around. That property helps us today when it comes to diffraction. If we have some light going through a piece of glass or plastic that has many, 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 many slits in it, like little corners, it can bend the light such a way to as to have constructive and destructive interference. We're interested in the constructive interference, the maximums, which is governed by this equation, which you can find in your physics textbook, where D is the distance between the slits. And we're only going to be interested today in the first order, not the second and third order, so M will be one for us all day, leaving us this equation d sine theta equals lambda. All right. And what we're going to do with this information is our ultimate goal is to find the Rydberg constant for hydrogen. So let's look at this. In general, the Rydberg constant is minus the ground state energy divided by Hc Planck's constant, the speed of light. Now, for hydrogen, the ground state energy is minus 13.6 electron volts. It would be different for helium and so on. And then for hydrogen specifically, we can calculate that using universal constants. And I'll leave it to you. And I do recommend at least one time in your physics life you actually plug these in and calculate it. And what you'll get is our accepted value 1.0968 times 10 to the minus 7. Uh, so for today, today, this is what we need. This is what we need. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. What this equation is telling us is that if we have an electron in a certain state, <coughs> an initial state, Ni, quantum number Ni, and if it drops to a lower energy state, some final energy state with a different quantum number, it will release a photon of light with wavelength lambda. So for us, we're going to be looking at the Balmer series of hydrogen, <clears throat> where each of them will drop down to the second state, giving us light that we can see. So for example, if we have an electron from the third state drop down the second state, it releases a red photon. From the fourth to the second state, a blue-green photon. From the fifth to the second state, a blue-purple photon. All right. This is for later. We are going to begin over there with mercury, not hydrogen. So. Let's take a look at this mercury lamp. Take a good look at this. This here is a diffraction grating. Many, many slits. And I'm going to now put the grating in front of the lamp and then get a good look at that. Get a good look at that. See what happens. We can see the spectral lines on either side. And we can also see the different orders, too. In other words, they repeat as they get farther. We're only interested in the first order. And we're interested in the green ones for Mercury. Okay. So, now, I'll put this in front of both our friend and our enemy for the lab, the spectrometer. The spectrometer. And we can see... Right here, this is our diffraction grating, but don't touch it. Don't touch the diffraction grating or you'll mess up its alignment, but there it is. All right? So, <coughs> inside of here, 
is a crosshairs that you'll use to line up with the right side of each line. You can focus the crosshairs by pushing this eyepiece in or out. And when you swivel the spectrometer around, be careful not to do it with the eyepiece. Just do it with this. So our first measurement is to find the straight on, undifracted light that's coming through. So I arrange this to the very, very center straight on. And I want to match the right side of the line to the crosshairs. In other words, I want to put the crosshairs on the right side of the line. And then as soon as I'm in the ballpark of my alignment, I can lock it with this knob on the right side that's farther away from me. And then I can make much more precise changes with the knob that's on the right side that's close to me. Oh yes, much more precise. Perfect. Okay. So this is what we're looking at. This is what we're looking at. This is the This is the crosshair. It might be hard to see, but it's aligned with the right side of the undifracted line coming through. All right, make sure it's on the right side. Okay. Now, now, how we determine the angles is on the other side. Is on the other side. We can see that we have our angles, our, our degrees, whole degrees, and then here on top of it, we have the veneer. This will allow us to find the minutes of the angles. And you can use the magnifying glass. Some pe most students use this orientation, but for me and my eyes, I need to put it down here. Let your eyes determine where you put your magnifying glass. So let's look at this. Let's remind ourselves how to read a veneer. We determine the whole degree units with where the zero is here. In other words, this line for the zero is after the 180, so I know that I have 180 in some minutes. And to determine the minutes, we have to look at the top part here. And we have to find two lines from the top and bottom that are flush, that align perfectly. So we can start over here, and we can see clearly this is not it. These are not it. In other words, look, this top line is to the left of these lines. And as we move toward here, we can see that this is also to the left. But we can also see that it's becoming less to the left, less to the left, less to the left. And then on the other extreme, we can see, ah, this is to the right. And then less to the right, less to the right. And then somewhere in between, we can try to guesstimate our value. Mm, let's see here. So, no, 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 good, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, so... Mm, I say with my eyes that it's there. So the final measurement is 180 and 2 minutes. 180 and 2 minutes. While we're here, I have another one. Now this measurement doesn't mean anything for us. It's just a practice one. Because it encounters a, another type of angle where the minutes are more than 30. So let's take a look. Let's see here. So the zero here, well, it's definitely after the 290. But it's more than halfway between. In other words, this is the 290. That's the 291. So this is a little bit more than halfway in between. So when I match up the minutes here, whatever minutes I get here, it's now 30 plus this number. So let's see here. No, 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 good, no. Good, good, good. No, no, no. So, uh, hmm, hmm. so from my eyes, I see it is five right here. So this angle is 290 with 30 plus five minutes. So 35 minutes.